Dr. Leitman, you speak in terms of forces, a system. It sounds as if there's, like, what about human uh, opinion, emotion? You, you, it sounds like there's a, it's like an electrical circuit, and if it gets to a certain overload, there's an, a fuse burns, and we get what we call Holocaust. I mean, for people, it's very hard to, to see reality and human life in this way, that every human is, a, <laughs> you know, it's an independent unit. Can you explain about that? Lick, I can explain this. Well, look, I can explain this in different in different ways. My my original profession is medical biocybernetics. That that has to do with systems, operating systems of the human body and the whole of nature, because the human body is a representation of all systems in nature. And so the way I look at nature is as an integrated single system. And so there are different forces and counterforces working in that system, and I see how they come together and coalesce. And to me, it's very clear that you have to have a negative force and you have to have a positive force, and they both work together, achieving higher and higher levels of balance. And in that system of forces, there is that group called the Jews with the role they need to perform. And we have to explain it to all the nations of the world, too, so they take their part in it as well. Uh, for example, um, as part of what we're doing with, with my organization, there are hundreds of thousands of people all around the world, all around the world, in all languages and cultures and races, and everyone can take part in that study, and they all come to our, to our conventions and to our studies, and they, they see it. And then again, these are people from China, Japan, uh, the Far East, South America, North America, Europe, Africa, Israel, Russia, Siberia even, everywhere, all continents and, and all places. People today are gradually beginning to see that there is something rational in this. It's, it's not about a, a blind faith. This is something that connects to nature itself. And, and some people are beginning to see this and, and see the, that reality works this way. And then it speaks so, to some people. So the Holocaust isn't a thing we may necessarily fight directly, but uh, rather something we have to deal with by playing a certain role in the system, by kind of working within the system. Is this something you also feel, Professor Patterson, or is this something that... that, uh, uh, that um, well, the Holocaust, you, you've opened up a large topic with the Holocaust, so we have, we've opened that up. Um, I, I have a, a, I understand and, 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 and sympathize with what Dr. Lehman's saying, that the only thing that makes me a little nervous, although I know, I know it isn't intended this way, that is that when you speak of forces, you might uh, mitigate agency. In other words, people are responsible for what they d decide to do. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'll, uh, you know, my students ask me what made Hitler do it, and I said, I said, my answer is usually nothing made him do it. He decided to do it. He's responsible, right? So, um, yes, when when Jews as assimilate, and looking back, it's a process of imitating those who would become their murderers. Yes, it it it. Uh, it opens the way to evil, um, but that, but the, still, the murderer is responsible for the murder, not the victim. And and I, I I'm sure Dr. Leitman would, you know, would, would would not take issue with that. Um, but it's and when you when you it, when you look at um, the Holocaust, I mean, it's it's a major extreme example of what happens when. Somebody sets out to get rid of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is actually how the Nazis specifically described what they were doing. Um, that one of their ideologues named Alfred Rosenberg says that the, it's not Jewish blood that poisons the Aryan spirit. It's Judaism. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Jews represent you know, the teaching and tradition. So, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So and to, to put this a little differently, in the case of the Holocaust, you have Nazis, you have anti-Semites who uh, 
who in their in this case they were not anti-Semites because they were racist. They were racist because they were anti-Semites. In other words, they have to establish an anti-Semitic premise or outlook in order to arrive at a racist ideology. Um, they have to think that they have to change the nature of their thinking and not just the content. So when when we if I can shift just a little, when we speak of nature. Uh, a, a Jewish understanding of nature, certainly a Kabbalistic understanding of nature, is rather different from an, a Hellenistic understanding of nature. In other words, um, every, every subatomic particle of nature contains the divine spark from a Kabbalistic point of view, contains the, the, the word of God, is spoken into being, and is sustain, sustained at every instant by God speaking. Uh, so there is a divine spark. There's Torah in nature, right? God the creator, Elohim, is with the, the gematria is the same of, of Elohim, is the same as Hateva, the, the nature, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a connection. But that, uh, I think for, for many people, including Jews, that understanding of nature, if we invoke nature, it has to be explained and, and clarified. It isn't it's, it's not just the nature that you look at through a telescope or a microscope. It's the nature that you listen to. The spark is a voice. The spark is the word. Uh, and, and, and therefore, it's, it's about a relationship. Nachmanides, one of the great Kabbalists, 13th century, says that uh, when we read Barashit Bara, in the beginning created, uh, according to Nachmanides, Bara is a cognitive breed, covenant. So the, the, the movement of creation is a movement into a covenantal relation. Uh, the Zohar says, reading, Bereshit bara Elohim et ha, in the beginning God created et, you know, et ha shemaim et ha. The, the et ha is ata, you. In the beginning God created the you. The relationship. The connection. Um, so, yes, the, the Holocaust collapses. When the relationship collapse, it happens when the relationship collapses, and the Nazis systematically assaulted the human-to-human -human relationship because they knew that's where the soul draws its breath in that between space. So Primo Levi described Auschwitz. Primo Levi, famous survivor, described Auschwitz as a realm in which every man was ferociously alone. One of the most haunting lines in Holocaust literature is in Night, when uh, Elie Wiesel, Eliezer, the, the, the youngster, is told by one of the inmates, here, there are no fathers, there are no sons, there are no brothers. You know, each, every, every one of us lives and dies alone. What plagues modernity or post-modernity post is that the, the, our way of thinking is isolating. Our social media is isolating. It's me and my phone. Facebook is the opposite of the face. So the, as, as each of us becomes more and more isolated, uh, anti-Semitism has more and more room to spread. So the, the challenge, and it's a daunting one, is to overcome this, this, this radical isolation in a realm in which everything conspires to increase the isolation. 